When I installed the Megan Racing headers on the Copper Cooper, the oxygen sensor wires were not long enough for me to install it into the primary oxygen sensor port. If you saw the video, you know that I just plugged it so the exhaust didn't have a hole. The car will still run and get me from A to B, but it's not going to be running very efficiently. With it plugged, the car will give out a check engine light as you can see here. In order for me to get the car working as it should, the oxygen sensor needs to be mounted on the car so that the ECM, the engine control module, will be able to change the air fuel ratio on the fly, as opposed to running off of baseline numbers. So with that being said, the oxygen sensors need to be about 6 inches longer in length so it can reach the port. So for this DIY, you're going to need your oxygen sensor. You're going to need however many wires that are corresponding to here. So here, there's see how there's four wires that comprise the O2 sensor? This means that you're going to need four wires of the same length that we're going to attach to this. Now, whether it be 16, 18, or 20 gauge, whatever gauge this is, that is what you need. After that, you're going to need some way to protect the wiring and all your electrical stuff after you're done everything. So I've got shrink wrap. Shrink wrap does the best job, but if you don't have shrink wrap, you can always get away with using electrical tape. If you use the shrink wrap, you're going to need a lighter, you're going to need some sort of wire strippers, you're going to need your solder, and of course, the soldering iron itself. So this oxygen sensor has four wires in it. Being a four wire oxygen sensor, it means that it's got one wire for the sensor signal, one wire for the signal ground, and another two wires for the voltage to power the internal heater. All four of these wires are the same size, so we can get a spool of the same size wire to get this job done. In this case, I'll be using 20 gauge copper wire with insulation. If you can, try to match the wiring to the same size as OEM because the O2 sensors are very sensitive to voltages. So if you go with too large, you might get unnecessary resistance. And if you go with too small gauge wire, you might not be able to flow the current properly. So we're going to need to extend this six inches with the additional wire. I'm going to stagger the cuts just so that the wrapping we have will be able to fit over the wires and not make it too bulky. I already went ahead and pulled the wrapping back so we have the wires exposed. Now it doesn't matter which wire you start off working with because they all need to be cut and extended. Pick one and give it a snip. With the wire cut, I'm going to have to remove the insulation on both parts of the wire so we can solder the 6 inch extensions into here. Grab a set of wire strippers and remove about a half inch worth of insulation on both ends. Once we have both wires stripped, twist the wires of the fiber so that they aren't frayed and we can get a clean connection. We won't be making the wiring harness too thick once all eight joints are soldered together. Once you've done that, grab your box of shrink wrap and slide two pieces onto the wire before you solder the joints together. Remember that you won't be able to put the shrink wrap on the wire after both connections are soldered. Make sure that you select the size of shrink wrap that's big enough to fit over the wire and past the soldered joint. If you didn't get a chance to see my tutorial on how to solder electrical connections, be sure to give it a watch. It goes through the basics of how to solder wires together. Either click on this annotation now or click on the link in the description box once you've watched this video. Once you have your wires ready to be soldered, plug in your soldering iron and get it hot. In the meantime, set your wires up in a set of helping hands or a vise like I have here. This will help me perform the soldering job as the wires won't move around. To make a good connection, make an X with the wires and then twist the wires over each other. You need a good physical connection before you can get a good electrical connection. Tin your tip and then put the soldering iron right up to the joint. Allow the heat in the soldering iron to pass through the wires and then feed the solder right up into the connection. It should melt the solder and fill in any spaces of the wire, giving you a proper connection. Slide one piece of shrink wrap over the joint we just soldered. Grab a lighter and apply some heat to it so it shrinks and makes a watertight seal. That's how you get each one of the wires soldered. Repeat this step for the other end of the wire. With the first of four wires done, it's time to proceed with the next three. Pick another one of the wires in the bunch to cut. Now, instead of cutting it at the same place where we did the first one, move about an inch or two down the wire so we stagger up the connections. This will reduce how bulky the harness gets after we're done all four wires. Install the next three wires just like the first and you'll be done in no time. With all four wires done, you'll need to protect the extra wiring from any exhaust heat because it's going to be right by the headers. If you have some high temperature fiberglass insulation, similarly to what was on the O2 sensors before, you can put some on there to protect it from the heat, or you can wrap it in the same heat resistant gold wrap that I used on my intake. With the O2 sensors ready to be installed, grab your sensors and screw them into the port of the headers. Now don't forget to insert the O2 sensors up into the wiring harness so it works. If all goes well, we should be able to see that the primary O2 system is getting readings from our scan tool. 
If your set of headers that you bought comes with a defouler, your check engine light will turn off after this. But because mine didn't come with one, my check engine light will still be on. To fix this, a defouler needs to be installed. Stay tuned for that video. I'll have a link for it in the description box when I'm done uploading it. If you have any questions regarding the video, please post your comments down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.